Greetings to all my faithful friends in TV land. This is Senior Issues, etc., and I'm your host, Vita Verdon. I never know whether I should say good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, because the show is seen in so many different times in so many different communities. So I just have got it boned down to greetings. Now hurry up, go and get your cup of coffee, your tea, your Coke, whatever, and come and sit down with a paper and pencil, because this is an awareness month and we have vital information for you. It's an honor to have the guests that we have on today. Have you had enough time? Okay. Now I want you to sit back, be alert, put your glasses on, rest, put your feet up, and take this information in because you need to need this and you need to know about it. We have our state's attorney office here with us today, the head of it, the big guy, and this is Michael Nerham. He's been on the show before, but he's come at the right time on the right month to tell you about something you need to know. Oh, it's a warm welcome to Michael Nerham. Hey. Mike, it's good to have you back on the show. Great and to be the, back. It, it's a blessing that we have you right at the right time. But before we go into it, you know, there's a lot of people that may not remember you or we didn't have them uploaded into our system that know anything about you. So if you could look right into that camera and tell them a little bit about yourself, okay? Sure. So I'm uh, Bill Lake County State's Attorney and every county in Illinois has a state's attorney. Uh, there's 102 counties in Illinois. I grew up here in Waukegan and uh, started my career as a assistant state's attorney in the office. There's about 140 plus people that work in our uh -huh. office. Uh, so I worked in all the different divisions in the state's attorney's office handling all different types of cases. So you got a nice background of experience. Sure, and I've been a defense attorney as well. Uh -huh. And then I ran for uh, this position in 2012 and lucky but enough But those to be guys back out there, they want to know, are you married? I'm married, I have three kids. And, and, uh, and what are the kids' names? Mason, Grace, and Matthew. And how about your wife? My wife's name is Andrea. Well, this is a tradition on this show. We don't give little kisses. We give smackaroonies. <laughs> so I went to look at that camera. Now you got to give four. Okay. One for your wife and one for each kid. Right there. Well, here there. we go, because it's always a good opportunity to embarrass my kids. So. Okay. That's for Mason, my 14-year-old. He'll be the most embarrassed. Okay. That's for Grace, my daughter. She probably won't be that embarrassed. Okay. And that's for Matthew. He's young enough. He still likes me. And your wife? And my wife. A double one a double. for her. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So, all right. So, first of all, let's start with the basics. You know, uh, is what does it mean to be a state's attorney, and what is the state's attorney's office all about? That's what they want to know yeah. out there. So, on TV, law and order type shows, oftentimes uh -huh. our position is referred to as the DA, the or DA. district attorney. You got that? You know, when they say, "Hey, the DA is in yeah. that office." So in Illinois, we of course we have to be different. So uh -huh. we're called state's attorneys. But okay. uh, any state level crime that happens in Lake County uh -huh. is our responsibility. So anything including traffic tickets all the way up through and including murder cases, uh -huh. if they happen in Lake County, they're our responsibility. Uh -huh. We also have a civil division. So there's criminal law and civil law. Um, our civil division represents a Lake County in any civil case. Uh -huh. So if somebody were to file a lawsuit against the city, or the, the county rather, or if any of the county's elected officials or the county board needed legal advice, uh -huh. our office is responsible for that as well. Uh -huh. Now, uh, your jurisdiction is just Lake County. Is it anything outside of Lake County? Nope, just Lake County. Oh, so then the other, they, they have their own in the other counties. Right, this so Cook County, for example, Ken right. Fox is the state's attorney. DuPage County is Bob Berlin, King uh -huh. County is Joel McMahon, so on and so forth. Okay, <laughs> so uh, your position is you are over all the all these things that you just told us about. Mm -hmm. You are over all these offices. Okay, so now uh, what what are you going to keep get us informed on? What what is this Awareness Month? Sure. So it's April right now. April is Child Abuse Awareness Month and Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Uh, also, what I think you're going to have to speak up a little bit. Sexual assault awareness. Okay. Month. So, uh, and probably a lot of other different things. But f as far as we're concerned, those are two areas that are in incredibly important. Uh -huh. They're important to the entire community, and it's just an opportunity for us to uh, get people talking about these issues. Well, I know, like we were talking before the show, you said, "Do you remember 
and you you want to go through that with our audience? Sure. So we have uh, part of our office. Well, you were remembering this man. What uh, yep. was his name? Foreman. Fred Foreman. I'm, okay, I'm getting that, there. Okay. So part of our office is the Lake County Children's Advocacy Center, okay. which is a facility where we do all the interviews of children uh -huh. that have been the victims of either physical or sexual abuse. The concept was started by Fred Foreman, who was the state's attorney in Lake County. Uh, this is 30 years ago. Uh, he's uh -huh. still around, but he was really a pioneer in that he came up with this idea to have a facility where these interviews would take place uh -huh. that is much more comforting and inviting for children. Uh, because originally the interviews were taking care of place in the police station. Oftentimes they were in a police station and that's or a very somewhere hostile that environment. They're just not designed to be kid-friendly places. So, uh -huh. so the advocacy center really is. And the initial one was in a house in Waukegan. Uh -huh. We've grown and we've moved. We're out in Gurney and uh -huh. in uh, the old post office uh, on Old Plain Road. Uh -huh. uh, but on the it's, on the outside, it looks like an old post office. But on the inside, it's designed to be really kind of a, a comfortable and inviting space for children. When they come in, there's murals on the wall. The interview rooms are designed to look more like a living room or something uh -huh. like that. And there's a lot of effort that we put into just trying to make that whole process uh -huh. as uh, easy and, and the least amount of stress as possible. Because we know, even with all of that, when these poor kids come in to be interviewed, they're terrified. Uh -huh. uh, they're talking about something that's not comfortable to talk about. Uh, they're scared. They're scared of us. They're scared of the process. We know all those things. So there's a lot that we do. Uh, and there's a lot of effort that goes into making sure that we're not re-victimizing these children uh, as they participate in the criminal justice process. Uh huh. Now, how long has this been in existence, the new facility, the old facility that you made a new facility? So over 30 years that the, this, this has been in existence. And now, of course, there's an advocacy center. No, I mean in the new location. So I think they were there uh, in the 90s is when they moved out to Gurney. Uh -huh. uh, the initial one, again, was in Waukegan. Into the post office? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now it's getting established. So we've made some upgrades significantly, uh -huh. both internally, uh, also on the outside of the building. We raised some funds. There's a charitable organization that uh -huh. runs the advocacy center. We raised over $100,000 from the community to put in a healing garden, uh -huh. which is on the north side of the building, and it's uh -huh. designed to be a peaceful space for the uh -huh. kids to come to when they come in and be interviewed. If they need a break, uh -huh. if they need to just get outside and have some peace, feel supported, uh, that facility is there. So that's something we just completed. Well, now, when you're speaking of this facility, is this facility just for the interviews, or do you house some of these children? Just for the interviews. So it's just for the interviews. Right, right. What we do with these types of cases, it's, a, it's called vertical prosecution. And what that means is our attorneys, prosecutors, are okay. working with the police from the moment the crime is reported okay. through the investigation and then through the prosecution. So we're there from the ground all the way to the end. And that's important because it helps us build much stronger cases. So we have a whole team out there at the Advocacy Center. It's not just, although it's part of the state's attorney's office, uh -huh. the facility is. We have people there from Department of Children's and Family Services. We have the health department out there, the sheriff's department, a lot of community organizations. We partner with organizations like, for example, the Zacharias Center, which is an organization in Gurney that does treatment for these people as they uh -huh. go on. So it corresponds yeah. with right. other organizations. Uh, well, uh, a question that I want to ask, now when you say uh, this is for children, now at uh, what age level would you say that that it is from from infancy to what age so to, to be considered to a child? So it's infant through 18, but we do see some adults uh, at the center, so some people in their late teens, early 20s, uh -huh. but technically it's up to 18. Uh -huh. We'll also do interviews of developmentally disabled adults uh -huh. at the advocacy center as well. And quite frankly, if we, ever, if we have any victim or witness that wants to have an interview done in a, in a different uh -huh. setting, we're very open to uh, accommodating uh, well, that. You know, uh, first of all, they, you do have a website. We do. Could you just look into that camera and nice and loud tell the website? Sure, it's LCSAO, so Lake County State's Attorney's Office, but the initials LCSAO.org. Okay, now that's the, your website. That's the State's Attorney's website. Right. Now you have a link on sure. there? There's okay, so now what do they come to? They come to a home page? Right, so if you go on the home page of the state's attorney's office website, so lcsao.org, there's a link on there for the Children's Advocacy Center, 
which has a, a whole and then bunch of give, information. Their the information will go on, and there's right. videos attached to that, too, there's right? All, yeah, there's videos. There's all kinds of stuff. There's information about our dogs. We also have, uh, we have three dogs that are part of our staff, uh -huh. two of them. Uh, and one of them is actually housed at okay. the advocacy center. What do center. they call these dogs? Do they call them care dogs or something? So they're comfort dogs or they're facility comfort. dogs. Two of them are. Okay. Uh, and then the, the other one I'll talk about in a second. But the two comfort dogs, uh -huh. we have uh, Mitch and Hitch. Uh -huh. uh, they come pre-named. They're donated to the county. So oh, all their nice. services are donated. And they're designed just to provide some comfort to the kids because uh -huh. we all know that People that love dogs know that uh -huh. dogs have a way of kind of feel, making us feel less stressed out or less anxious. Um, and we have dogs on staff that are trained to do just that. You know what I want you to do? I want you to give the website one more time. Sure, it's lcsao.org. Okay, and so then it's linked down. And also what I'd like you to do is give a telephone number because a lot of seniors out there don't have a computer. Sure. Okay. So Yep, our, no, right in that camera, right our there. direct number is 847-377-3000. Okay, so now they can ask to give, have information either about the state's attorney's office or this advocacy group, right. child advocacy right. group. Yep. Okay, well, you know, we're going to go deeper into this, but what I'm coming up to, and I think I'll do that now, I have my little commentary, is Vita's Pearls of Wisdom, so I'm going to do that now. Okay, now I have had uh, uh, inquiries from you, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate the calls, and I appreciate my emails. And the subject matter that was brought up this month, I want to go over three subject matters with you to, to give a response to them. First of all, the organization SHIP, S period, H period, I period, P period, that is Senior Health Insurance Programs. That's a part of Medicare. I've had a show on this, and I'm having somebody back on this uh, very shortly in the next few shows. But what you can do is, now I can tell you in uh, Lake County, there's a representative uh, at the uh, Senior Center up on Lewis Avenue in Waukegan, and her name is Loretta Pabli. And she's going to be on the show, but you can go there. And in Lake Forest, I know th that at the uh, Lake Forest Senior Center, uh, the, the person's name there is Janet Fryer. And I know that there's one at the uh, Highland Park Senior Center. But if you're in a location that you don't know where there is a representative, just go to the library, to the reference desk, your local library, and they'll look it up online for you, and they'll tell you where it is. So I want you to have that. Then uh, another thing that I, I wanted to uh, uh, talk to you about is that uh, I've had um, inquiry, and I've, I've had uh, somebody uh, request that I have a show on uh, medical marijuana. Well, I don't know enough information on that. And uh, what I have to consider is I, I think it's too early in the stage that there isn't that much scientific data in the orbit in which I live in Lake County. I don't even know of anybody that's on the program. So I'm interested if anybody has any kind of scientific data or any kind of experience with this that they would, I, I, I will give you at the end uh, my email and uh, 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 my, my, you can write me or my phone number uh, that you can uh, uh, send me any information on this. Also, uh, that I am booked for this season and then uh, we, my last show is in June and we go off with its reruns in the summer so we're seen all year round. So if you have any ideas and you, there's something important you want brought up or you feel that you could be on the show, what you can do is you can contact me at VitaVerdon at Comcast.net. And my name will go up on the screen so you'll know how to spell it. My telephone number is area code 847-573-1233. And also you can write me at 130 East Cook Avenue, apartment 408, Libertyville, Illinois. You know, I'm always, I have your interest at heart. 
because we're in this together. We're, we're community. So I'm interested in anything that you have to say. And what I am is I'm grateful and I'm thankful that I have the audience that I have because you have been faithful to the show. And that's why we're still on the air. And we're just concluding our 18th season. And God willing, that we'll start our 19th season in September. So let me hear from you. I'm interested. I'm interested in everything that you have to say. Now we're going to get back to this is uh, child uh, advocacy month, right? Child abuse awareness. Uh, child month. abuse advocacy month. So we're interested in that. That we get all the information that we can get about that. Okay. Now let's go into this a little bit deeper, Mike. Sure. You know. Now you you from your office, you're you're linked quite closely to this. And, we are. And this has grown. Well, so it's, it's developed more that it's not in the crude fashion that it used to be. Right. Like interviewing the children in a hostile environment. So we've learned protective ways, right? Right, because we don't want to we don't want to hurt these kids anymore. Right. You know, they're and, hurt and already. They certainly are, and there's a lot of uh, factors that make this a very underreported crime, which means it happens a lot, but very few times do people actually come forward. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Yeah, and, yeah. One of the one of the main reasons for that is because uh, most often the yeah, the victim of the crime uh -huh. uh, knows or is, is has some relationship with the offender. Who is the offender? It's is. not, you know, we do a lot of work and some good, some really good work in terms of educating youth with regard to stranger danger and things like that, uh -huh. and that's important. The reality, though, is that the vast majority of these crimes are committed by somebody they know and they trust. Someone close. <clears throat> right. So that makes it hard. It makes it hard for these kids to come forward because they don't believe anybody's going to believe them. They're not sure what the process is going to uh -huh. be like. So that's why it's important to do programs like this so we can kind of let people know what the program, what the process is like and that there's real people there that really care that will listen to these kids, that there's an environment where they're going to be made comfortable. Uh, we Again, we have the dogs there if they want. We don't force the dogs on these kids, but if a young person comes in and they want to have the dog there while they're interviewed or even uh, when appropriate when they have to testify, uh -huh. the dogs can be there for them. So, uh -huh. so there's a lot of things that we're trying to do uh, just to get out, get out in the community and let people know that this organization even exists. Uh -huh. uh, the well, you see, you have to get the word out that this organization exists. Sure. Okay, so we as community-minded people, let's go over what our community, the different areas, what our community can do to help sure. and be a part of this and support the, this organization. So the biggest thing people can do is keep their eyes open. And when they see something happening, to report it. And if they know somebody they, in their family. To report family, it to your office. To report it to our office or their local police department, who okay. will then contact our office. We work, there's over 40 police departments in Lake County, and we work with all of them okay. and our sheriff's department. So do you hear that? Now we're reemphasizing that. You could either report it to a police department or report it directly to your office, right? right? So that's one thing they could do. Sure. Also, uh, well, what could they do to help this advocacy group? So the Advocacy Center, while it is part of the state's attorney's uh -huh. office, it's a separate entity that's a 501c3. So it's, 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 so it's a charitable, it's a charitable organization. organization. So it has to live on support. Right. We do receive some funding from the county. But that's uh, never enough. It's not enough to do what we need to do every right. day. And, and, and the extra things that we do, like the, the healing garden and the dogs, uh -huh. We rely on donations for those things. Those uh, are all donated from the community. Because the dogs have to be provided for. Right. And then they have to be, somebody has to take care of them too. Right. So we have attorneys in our office that volunteer to take care uh, of the dogs. We're also very fortunate. We have uh, the food is donated and their uh -huh. care is donated. But there's also incidental costs that come uh -huh. up that we. So I would say then one way is that you you could give a contribution. Sure, contribution to the Advocacy Center. Uh, people can volunteer their time. We have volunteers that uh -huh. help out at the Advocacy so Center. So if they wanted to give a contribution, they just write it to the Advocacy Center? The Friends Committee of the Advocacy Center. The Friends Committee of the Advocacy mm -hmm. uh, Center in Waukegan, Illinois, right? It's, well, it's, in, it's actually physically it's located in Gurney. In Gurney. But it's the Lake County Children's Advocacy Center. Uh, and so there's a link on our website that tells people. Go on to the website and get the information. Okay, so that's one way. They also could pray for them. That's a, a if, huge thing. I mean, these kids need help. They need the love. The kids they need, need support. help. They could pray for them. And then they could also 
physically volunteer, right? Sure. We have people that come in and they'll read sometimes to the kids or they'll just be there to support the children. We also have people that donate items uh -huh. uh, like juice boxes or stuffed animals or toys or things like coloring books, uh -huh. uh, all those things. We have a list of things where uh, people come in and they just donate things, which is really nice. It's kind of neat when people come in and they donate different items for these, uh, for these kids uh -huh. when they come in. Now, uh, when you say, uh, tell us a little bit about the dogs okay. that we, d we started and you told us the names yeah. of the dogs. Sure, we have Mitch and Hitch. Uh, Mitchell is the dog that's actually on site. He's, uh, he's out at the Advocacy Center every day. He's now, in Yellow Lab. Now, on your lab. website, you said that you do have videos of these dogs yep. at work, right? Yep. yep. So that's one thing you could go on. Now, if you don't have a computer, what you can do is go to your local library and go to the reference desk and they'll, they'll kindly, they're so good about this, assist you and they'll look it up for you and they'll, they'll show it to you. Sure. Okay. All right. I'm sorry I interrupted you, no, but I no just problem. wanted to insert that. Yeah. So uh, Mitch and Hitch are there all the time. Uh -huh. uh, they're, they're beautiful animals and um, they're there to just really help these children when they come in. And we've seen so many cases where kids come in and they're terrified. When they walk in those doors, they're scared. They don't know what it's going to be like. And they see this dog, which I think a lot of people, it's the last thing they'd expect to see in a prosecutor's office. And they run up and they give him a hug. And he's, he's trained to be just very calm and very peaceful. He'll literally lay at their feet, uh, sometimes for over an hour while they're talking. And just uh -huh. really a source of comfort for these children. Um, so that's, it's a great program that we have. Uh -huh. uh, the other thing we do that's important is we really try to limit the amount of times these children are interviewed to only one time. And historically, the poor kids, they'd be interviewed several different times uh -huh. by several different adults, none of whom were necessarily trained in how to interview children. Uh -huh. well, we have a series of protocols where all the police departments know, uh, that, and they all work with us, and they bring these children in, and they're interviewed one time by a trained professional in a comfortable uh -huh. setting. And again, uh, our numbers we're seeing are really increasing dramatically. We're look so last our, our largest amount of cases we've seen historically was a year when we had over 700 new interviews. That's 700 new cases. Uh, uh, that's good as a society how we, we've learned to improve the techniques that it's used on on these children that are damaged. Right. Well, what it shows is. In addition to that, it shows that more and more people are coming forward uh -huh. because earlier, as I indicated, this is a crime that's not reported very often, uh -huh. but it shows more and more people are coming forward. And this year, we're, if our numbers hold true, and these are traditionally some of our lower months, we're on par to basically double that 700 number. So we're looking at over 12, 1,400 interviews this year. Really? Yeah. But again, just I, in Lake County. Just in Lake County. Seven to 1,400 interviews. Isn't right. that a shame? It's a Isn't shame, but it's a, also a good sign because it shows people are coming forward. But that's a good sign that that's being reported forward. Right. because we don't know how many went undetected. Exactly. I don't think it shows that this is happening more often. Oh. It's always been happening, but more people are yeah, having, coming, they're coming forward. And coming I really believe that's part of, because of, at least partially because of the work we're doing to try to educate the community uh -huh. and let people know that, these, that we're there and we're there uh -huh. to help people. Now, uh, there is a process that the children go through. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it, 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 you refer them to help centers. I know you have psychologists. So uh -huh. we, there's a new process where we actually have the health department, the Lake County Health Department. The, it, so it's linked to the they're, health? They're out there. They have people at the advocacy center oh. physically on site. Uh, and then we work with them. That's part of the site? That's part of the staff? Yes. Is the yeah. health department? Because. Uh -huh. You know, there's some cases, uh, unfortunately, where we believe a crime occurred, uh -huh. but we don't have enough evidence to prove it, so we don't, we can't charge the case. Uh -huh. But that doesn't mean that this that this victim doesn't still need help. They certainly do, uh, or the cases that we charge. Uh -huh. Those cases only last for a certain period of time, and then our role is over. But these it's children got, need help the rest of their lives. Or something? Is it there's a time limit? Well, we're involved while the case is being investigated and prosecuted. Right. And but then, once the court case is over, right. we're generally done with our work. But it's important to us that these children are taken care of as they go on through life because these are issues this they're going to deal with. This could affect their whole life. It will affect their whole life. And the, it's important so that they're the, cared it, for. 
So it's important that help is provided right. for them along the way. Right, which is why it's so important to us that we work with organizations like the Zacharias Center. Okay, but uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? So that's another charitable organization, uh -huh. and they're located here in Gurney. Uh -huh. um, they do a lot of counseling and work in education programs in schools. Uh -huh. uh, they're another wonderful organization that certainly could use support from your in viewers. In the therapeutic right. sense? Right, right. Right, oh, and so that's an ongoing issue. That's something that, that, that goes ongoing. And so you say the age goes like from infancy to 18, but then you did mention that you have taken on some young adults. Sure, P young so it adults. So it depends on the individual case. Right. So you can't give a specific, okay, this is the cutoff. This. No. You have to really hear things out. And we want to, we're here as a service to the community, so uh -huh. we, we want to, be as open as we can. So if people have questions to ask about this, like if they have some questions in mind, could they contact your office? Of course. All right, do you want to give them your telephone number? Sure, it's the 847-377-3000. Uh, we don't have, it's important to me because we are a community office, so we don't have one of those computers that answer the phone. Uh, we actually have human beings. When you call our office, somebody oh, will answer the phone. That's a uh, relief. And they're nice. You're probably going to talk to Karen or Lydia, who are the nicest uh, two people you'll ever meet. And depending on what the question is, they can steer you to, to another human being uh -huh. that will actually answer your question. Uh, we can also be reached through email, so people can send us an email. There's links on our website uh -huh. where people can send us an email, and we'll, we'll definitely get back uh -huh. to them. Uh, well, when you say that there, there's links, what are they linked to? So our office, we've spent a lot of time talking about child abuse and, okay. and domestic violence and crimes like that. Because um, it's a focus of your office and right. this is the advocacy month. Right. Okay. But we also, as I said earlier, any crime that happens in Lake County, so a, a DUI, uh, drug crimes, gang crimes, uh -huh. homicides, identity theft, uh -huh. fraud, we have divisions in our office that handle all those different types of crimes. Uh -huh. So if one of your viewers had a question about gang prosecution or identity theft or cyber crimes, you know, we can certainly help people in all so those different they, areas. So on anything, so I'm just bringing a hypothetical up because I know how uh, my viewers uh, think, I've gotten to know. So say somebody is suspicious of something, but they don't, you know, they're like on the verge and they don't want to make a fool out of themselves. Sure. Okay? Is that okay still to call your office? Absolutely. And have s somebody check it out, whether it would be child advocacy or a crime in a different matter. Right. But if they have that you are open to this, I want to leave that open for the audience right. to know. Because they may be thinking, well, I'm not really sure, so I don't want to be embarrassed, you know. You know, just let us know or, or call their local police department. If they're seeing something that's okay. concerning them, they can also contact their local police department. Okay. Well, now we've come to close to the end, and, uh, you know, i like you to say something inspirational. This is our community. So you look into that camera and tell them what they could do to be helpful to your office because you're the guys that are out there protecting us, and we're so grateful to you. Thank we're you. so appreciative of the good job that you're doing, and your reputation is highly regarded in the community. So we, we want to help in any way that we can. So just look into the camera and tell them that you have about a minute. Okay, well, I, I don't know that I'll take the whole minute, but you said it best, which is we're all in this together. And uh, my message would be if you see something, speak up, contact our office, contact the local police department. If you know of children uh, that are being abused or I think I have to cut you right there. When you come to the end of your rope, you tie a knot and hang on. You know why? Because... The best is yet to come. What we want you all to do this week is catch the spirit. God bless you. We love you. <laughs> Good show. Thank you. Very